In this tutorial, I show you how I do keyword research in 2018. This is research for a brand new blog post, just generating ideas for topics of a blog post. And this is a three part series. So this first part is the keyword research for a new blog post. The second one is gonna be how to use data from an existing blog post to increase traffic to that post. And the third one is gonna be how to use data from existing blog posts to get ideas for new blog posts. And we're getting started on part one right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we are all about WordPress. And if you want to get better at WordPress, make sure you stick around and hit the bell icon or the thumbs up or both while you're at it. And with that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture. So the first thing I do is head over to Google and I type in my search phrase. So let's say dog collars. It's probably a pretty popular one for dog owners. And if we search for that, I have a little app on my Chrome installed called Keywords Anywhere, which is a little K over here. I've got a link to that in the description down below to where I get to get the app in the Chrome App Store. It's free and it instantly below the Google search has this volume of searches per month, cost per click and competition from one to, I don't know what the upper number is, but one is likely the most competition. This is a highly competitive keyword. And on the right hand side, if we scroll down past these Google ads or those, those shopping ads, we have related keywords. And this is where the power of, of keyword anywhere comes in because not only do you put in your main keyword, you might not think of all the alternatives that people are searching for. And these are alternatives people are searching for. They actual have they have actual search volume. And the more for a new blog, the more long tail the keyword, the more likely it is you're gonna rank if you write solid content. And for solid content, what I mean is if someone searches for unique dog collars Canada, for example, you want your blog post to be at least 1500 words these days. And you want to try to answer every single question someone could have about unique dog collars in Canada. Try to make it so when they come to that page, this is very important. When they come to that page, they will leave that page without any more questions. They know what unique dog collars are available. They know where to get them. They know possibly how to make them themselves. They know what sizes there are for various dogs. They know the colors and just whatever your research turns up. Uh, gone are the days where you can just sit down, write an article off the top of your head, 300, 500 words, and think that's gonna rank. It might if it's a very low competitive keyword, but if you want any kind of competitive keyword search traffic, it's so much easier to rank with a long blog post that covers all the bases and answers all the questions. So you get keywords from related keywords here. People also search for, which is similar to related, obviously, because they are quite similar. We have dog collars leather in this one and dog collars leather in this one as well. So it's the same keyword, but there's more down here. Like a watermelon dog collar, which dog wouldn't want that? Scroll down to the bottom of the page. Quite often, Google has these related searches which are gonna be the same as Keywords Anywhere. Keywords Anywhere is pulling information from down here as well. So if you don't have Keywords Anywhere and you don't wanna get it, you can still find related searches at the bottom of the page. Ninja trick, type in dog collar, so that's your main keyword, then type in the letter A, and you will see a bunch of suggested searches. These are searches that Google is suggesting. The reason they're suggesting them is because those searches get search volume, otherwise Google wouldn't know to suggest them. So if you type in dog collars A, you see Amazon and leashes and harnesses and everything after dog collars that starts with the letter A. Keyword Anywhere also puts in these search volume numbers. Then try the letter B. And then C, D, E, F, G. As you can see, there's, there's mad search terms. There's so many of them. <laughs> you can literally be writing about dog collars for the rest of your life if you wanted to. So that's how you get lots of search terms that are getting search traffic. And do you target necessarily the, the highest traffic search term you can? No, not for small blogs. If you're an authority site, sure, you can, you can do that. You can target them in the beginning as well, but don't expect to rank for that tomorrow. There are, honestly, there are keywords that you can rank for tomorrow. They're hard to find, but you can find them. And they are long tail keywords. So if, if you do this searching where you go through the, all the letters of the alphabet, you get all kinds of keyword ideas. When you're writing a blog post, if you do a long blog post, try to incorporate as many related keyword ideas as you can into that blog post. Because for example, 
if we do custom dog collars as our search term, as, as the, the thing we're writing our article about, custom dog collars could include leather dog collars, could include, let's see, watermelon, bow tie dog collars, uh, martingale dog collars, engraved dog collars, and then maybe you incorporate some information about dog leashes because maybe you want the leash to match the dog collar and dog harnesses and all those related keywords, put them all in the same post when it's relevant. Because if you look in your Google search console, let me just hop into there real quick and we go to performance and then we pick a page by going to pages and we click back to queries. We see something looks like this. This is the past six months for this blog post article. It's one of the lower traffic ones on the website, but you can see where I posted it. And then it slowly gets a little bit of traffic and then Google starts testing it for higher and higher traffic levels to see if the audience responds, like as in the searchers like the content and don't just bounce off when they get there. And if those tests end up doing well, we see the traffic continue to climb. These dips are all the weekends. So every, the first point in the dip is always Saturday or sorry, that one's a Friday then Saturday, and then Sunday's actually pretty big. So Friday and Saturday are the dips. People take days off on Friday and Saturday, apparently. So that's just a weekly routine. I see that across all the traffic on any WordPress property I have is, is always that dip on the weekends. Mm -hmm. But either way, this post is a longer post with a bunch of content, and it gets traffic from 427 different mm -hmm. queries. Now it could get more. I could write this post even longer and maybe I will. And then it'll get even more traffic. But my point is that you are over here, you find the dog collars keyword and you wanna do custom dog collars as your keyword search term. That doesn't mean you only do custom dog collars as your search term. You're actually trying to rank for all of these different search, all of these different search terms that are relevant to custom dog collars and leashes and harnesses because those are relevant to dog collars as well. So you can rank for, like I said, get traffic for 427 different keywords. You're not focusing on just one. That's a common misconception in SEO. You have your main focus keyword and you do, you optimize for the main one. You'd love to rank first for whatever that main one is, but that's gonna take a while. So by writing longer form content, you're optimizing for the main keyword, but you're also ranking for hundreds of other ones and getting traffic from those. So make sure you incorporate feel like I'm beating a dead horse here. Make sure you incorporate other variations of the keyword so you rank for them. So you get them from Google search. We saw that now. Let's go to Amazon. Amazon has very similar suggestions. And why does Amazon have these? Because people search for them. You can go here and type in A and B and C, just like we did in Google and you're gonna get a lot of the same results because people search for the same things in Google as in Amazon, but sometimes there are different ones. Let's see, let's, let's compare them really quick. If we do dog color C here, we have, this is probably localized search because I'm in Canada, custom, chain, cute, cheap, camo, chewy. And here we have chain's the same, camo's the same, customized is different. We had custom, I think it was custom. Yeah, custom. Amazon has customized. Cute's the same. Dog collars chain for medium dogs is different. We had just camel. They have camouflage as well. Camel for large dogs, choker for large dogs. So there are differences in the keywords. And likely if it's being searched on Amazon, it's likely being searched in Google as well. Just because Google shows 10 results here, that's not the only result list that shows up for the letter C. Because you can just type in CA and then have everything with a CA. CO. Type in camo. Look how many camo, like dog collars, camo. Look how many results there are. And I guarantee you, something like waterproof dog collars camo, that is not a highly competitive search term. It's just not. It, 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 I can almost guarantee you can rank for that fairly quickly by writing great content. And then you can go to YouTube. Same thing. You can go to Bing, same thing. Yahoo, same thing. I'm not going to go to all of them. You get the idea. But that's how you can drum up a lot of keyword search terms really quickly. You can go to a place called Uber Suggest. We 
which I believe was bought by Neil Patel. But from what I understand, he's keeping it the same way as it always was. So if we type in dog collars here, we want to search web because we want web results in English for me. You can pick different languages depending where you are in the world and who you're targeting. And now we have dog collars here and a bunch of suggestions, 928 different keywords found. This one's pulling suggestions from Google Suggest, which is which is this right here when we, when we type in these letters. This is Google Suggest. And then there's Keyword Planner, which is the Google Keyword Tool. And I thought that Uber Suggest used to show also others like Yahoo, Bing, things like that. But either way, this is another great place to pull up keywords, things you might not think of. And that is how these days I'm doing keyword research. I'm not overly concerned about what the traffic volume is for each one because over the years, for example, well, dog collars is a bad example because I don't have any traffic for dog collars, but I've found that an, a main focus keyword or any keyword really, dog collars camo, here it says 1900 searches a month. What I've found is that's not accurate. That's usually way less than there actually is for that search. And if you write the long post with a lot of variations of keywords, you rank for so many keywords, and you can rank highly for the long tail ones, that your posts can get a lot of traffic. The key is focusing on your main keyword as the main keyword for the page, incorporating lots of related keywords, writing long content, as in 1500 words or more, answering all the questions someone could have about the content. That's how you know when you're done. When you're done is when there are no questions left to be answered about that specific keyword. And you might think, oh, camel dog collars, I just write a, you know, that's only 500 words. I can only answer three questions about that. Do some research online, go to forums, go to Reddit, go to Quora, go to all those places and research what people are asking about dog collars. They might have questions about dog collars in general, but those questions still apply to dog collars in camo. So just try, just try hard to get your content to 1500 words or more and then write lots of content, write lots of it. And you don't rank right away. The same thing happens like, I, like you see here for almost every single post you ever write. Here it's not posted, here it's posted, gets a little bit of traffic. And then if you did it right, and the people who go to that page, they stay there, they don't bounce off, the traffic starts to increase and increase and increase. And then following that, you can go to part two of this tutorial, which I'm gonna get into, which involves this right here. It's a really quick video, uh, but then you can get even more traffic to those posts. You can probably already guess what part two is gonna be, but then you get even more traffic to those posts. So that is how I do keyword research in 2018 and probably for a while. And the awesome thing is it's totally free. You don't need those expensive keyword tools. You don't need SEM rush. You don't need, uh, what are the other ones? Ahref, you don't need, uh, well, whatever. Whatever kind of keyword tool they're trying to sell you, you don't really need it anymore because it's just all about content answering people's questions, incorporating long tail keywords, and is writing lots of content. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you follow along, then hit the bell icon or the thumbs up, and check out our private Facebook group, link to in the description down below. And next up, click on one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.